And now for something completely different. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Cinematic Relief, a Thunder and Lightning podcast. I'm Thunder. And I'm Lightning. Um, and today, we are going to be talking about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I'm very excited to be talking about it. I have a lot to say about it. I think you do as well. Uh, but before we get into that, because uh, that is the main course, mm. I watched a different movie, and I'm going to talk about it briefly. And I mean, I mean briefly. Um, so it's called Yes, God, Yes. Oh, that has um, Natalia. Yes. What's her name in it? It actually has two girls from Stranger Things. It has no Natalia kidding. Dyer, who plays Nancy, and it has the woman who plays Heather. Heather is the girl that Billy has with him. No, oh, Billy like his is sister? No, 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 no. That's, that's Max. Heather is the... Remember when Billy gets, like, taken by the thing, and he, like, there's a oh, co-worker okay, he okay, has, yeah. and then they... But, yeah, her. She's also in it. Um, And basically, first of all, this movie was only an hour and 17 minutes long. And yeah. And, frankly, I've seen YouTube videos larger. You've made that joke twice on this channel. Oh, about sorry. the same movie. Oh, it was a different fucking show, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> um, it is about a teenage girl played I by... I thought you were going to say Mutant Ninja Turtles, but okay. You always do think that when someone says teenage for some reason. Because that's the most exciting thing that can come after the <laughs> word teenage. No, you're right. Uh, no, it's about a teenage girl who is very Catholic and goes to a Catholic girl is school. Is that Natalie... Natalia Dyer. Natalie Diver? Mm-hmm. Okay. You nailed it. Um, and she has, as as most people do in, in the teen years, she has uh, a sexual awakening, and she struggles with that due to how Christian she is. Um, and then, so she goes to, like, a retreat, and the retreat is your everyday average Catholic Like retreat. camp? Come here, to, yeah, come here for four days and be with God and sing and, you know, repent and all that stuff, um, except she doesn't, why do you think, why do you think, yeah, that's what I thought. Oh. I started yelling at her. The, the robot, robot lady. that starts with the name A. Ooh, Ooh are you okay? Yeah. What did you just do? Hit the mic with my tooth. That sucks. Did your lip get in the way? Nope. Oh, okay. That was just straight tooth. I really thought I just broke my tooth there. Are you you didn't though? I'm no. I think I'm good. You okay. keep going. I'm gonna look at my teeth. You keep going. Sorry about that. That's okay. That sucks. Um. No, she she spends the whole time experimenting. I'm good, if you will. Um, but not in like. Super graphic ways. There was nothing like, you know, it wasn't creepy about it. Is what I'm trying to okay. say. Okay. Um, it was funny. It was. I didn't think it was gonna be a comedy. It was pretty funny. Um, I found myself laughing all. It was one of those movies where you can really tell what's gonna happen, and you're like, I bet this is gonna happen next, and then it does, and you're like, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said. Something happens, and I'm like, oh, that's it, isn't it? That was kind of a lame ending, kind of a lackluster ending. And then it keeps going. I was like, oh, okay. And then the last thing she does in the movie, I was just, like, not expecting it. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> that's not okay, I don't think. But, uh, yeah, it was cool. So I found out that it's actually based off a short film that also starred Natalia Dyer. No kidding. That was, like, you know, five or ten minutes long or whatever. But they actually made a movie about it, and it's just hitting Netflix now uh and i couldn't sleep well i didn't sleep last night so i watched it um and it was good but now let's talk about once upon a time in hollywood yes so first and foremost yes uh i've seen this movie a few times at this point this was your first viewing of the movie for this podcast correct tell me what you thought of it okay so once upon a time in hollywood is a movie that, as near as I can tell, is broken up into two acts. The first act is two hours long, and a bunch of random scenes happen that have nothing to do with anything. And then the second act is 40 minutes, in which Sharon Tate does not get murdered by uh, Charles Manson's entourage. Um, and here's the thing. Duh. I know that he likes to do this. He likes to uh, change history. 
and he's like, what if my characters did it? That's, you know, that's his thing. Um, and that's sort of what I didn't like about it. And I, Inglorious Bastards, right? You've seen it. Mm -hmm. It's, that is a movie where the exact same thing is, takes place. He's like, but what if my characters did it? And I think they did it really interesting. And I don't think anything necessarily interesting happened in this movie. There was a couple really good scenes. The, say what you will about Quentin Tarantino. Say what you will about this movie. The man knows how to direct and film a scene the exact way that he wanted to shoot it. Yeah. Um, and that is present in this movie as well. And here's the thing. I didn't hate this movie. I had a fun time watching this movie. I just, I think Quentin Tarantino's starting to lose me. Okay. Uh, and one thing I will say, this is not, this was not in the movie at all, technically, so it's kind of unfair for me to bring this up. But who the, f what the fuck do I care that it's his ninth film? <laughs> who gives a shit? Yeah. <laughs> make more movies, don't make more movies, I don't care. Yeah. Also, it's not your ninth film. It's your tenth film, but you consider Kill Bill mm -hmm. 1 and 2 one movie, even though you will not release them as such. Right. Anyways. <laughs> um, I... Here's here's all the things I didn't like. Okay. Um, there was a couple scenes that I was just like, fucking get on with it, right? And there was a couple scenes where I felt that way, but then later in the movie I was like, oh, okay, that other scene was actually can, important. Can we get an explanation? Yeah, so an explanation of what I just said is when he's feeding his dog, I was like, what the hell? Oh, but okay, then later fair. in the movie you're like, oh, okay, the feeding the dog scene was incredibly important. Yeah. But there's... I, I'm going to say four, three or four scenes for drive from one location to another with no dialogue, and we see the entire car ride there. Yeah. And I'll I was just that. like, please. Like, one of those is really cool when he's going back to his trailer. I thought that was well shot. When he's going back to his trailer. Uh, at night, he, he, uh, he leaves DiCaprio at his house. Gets in his oh, the crappy dog car and drives yeah. back to do the dog scene. Yeah. yeah, that one was shot well, but I will agree there are a few shots that like no, that. there was like I I can remember two with Brad Pitt and one with Sharon Tate. Um, I didn't like Bruce Lee wouldn't have done that, and it it kind of it was kind of weird. I thought the Bruce Lee scene was kind of weird. Okay. Um, first of all, because I thought. At first, I thought it was a dream sequence. I thought Brad Pitt was like, ah, what if I was there today? But then I realized that, like, that's the thing that yeah, he did that yeah. made them not want him on the set that time. And I was like, oh, so that did actually happen. It wasn't just like a an over uh, an over exaggerated dream sequence. Mm. Uh, and Bruce Lee wasn't, I don't know, he wouldn't have done that. You keep saying that, but, like, what? What makes you think he wouldn't have done that? Do you? Because I'm guessing Tarantino, like always, does a bit of research. And I'm assuming yeah. he, maybe that is how I Bruce Lee acted outside of his movies. Maybe, maybe, maybe he knows more than me. Maybe, uh, maybe Bruce Lee was known to be a little, uh, a little full of himself on the set of Green Hornet. But, um, I. I don't think that Bruce Lee... Bruce Lee wasn't someone to be like, you got beef? Let's punch it out, bro. You know? I don't know, though. I mean, like, I maybe you know more about Bruce Lee than I do, but I know very little. I've watched and, uh, a documentary about him okay. once. Because when I was in high school, my dad and I were really into martial arts. And yeah, it was like yeah. a new Bruce Lee uh, special. And it was cool because they got a lot of... Uh, famous people who are also black belts, and one of them was Kobe Bryant. Oh yeah, and that that was the moment where I was like, "That's pretty cool. This guy seems pretty neat." Yeah, for a sportsman, for a sports guy. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, well, well, we could go back and forth. N neither one of us knew how Bruce Lee would. No, have yeah, acted. it just it. That's one. That's why I'm being like a little cautious with like maybe he would, maybe he wouldn't. I don't personally think he would, but the scene did feel a little weird. Um, I didn't love that scene. I did appreciate that Kurt Russell was in this film and he didn't completely steal the show. I yeah. feel like Kurt Russell is known to do that. And uh, he just kind of played his role and then left, which I yep. thought was cool. What I didn't appreciate was the Charles Manson scene. 
because it had nothing to do. They didn't name him. They didn't say he didn't say his name. So I was left to assume that it was him. And the only reason I knew it was him is because I knew that. Because, okay, so when we watched Zodiac, I did absolutely no research on the Zodiac Killer because I didn't know anything about it. This time around, I didn't know anything about the Tate murders, and I did all the research I possibly could because I knew that he was going to change it. Yeah. So every time a name showed up that was on that Wikipedia article of either, like, a perpetrator or a victim, I was like, oh, there's that person. Yeah. Um... But Charles Minson shows up for like a second, and I guess he's like scouting the place, right? But he doesn't say his name, and he doesn't show up again for the whole movie. Well, and mainly because he wasn't overly no, involved kn- in it. No, I know, I know. I just I feel like that could have been cut out completely. If he's if he's gonna have like two lines and he's not gonna say his name, and and obviously the guy they got to play him doesn't look exactly like him because they. Why? Why would he? Yeah. Uh, why would Why would that one person look like an entirely different person? Um, I don't know. It just added nothing to the movie for me, and it it kind of put a bad taste in my mouth that they didn't even name him. Well, throughout the rest of the movie, they reference Charlie. They talk about Charlie, like the the ranch with all the hippies in it. Yeah, that's the Manson family. Oh, okay. That's his. That's his ranch. With that's that's the Manson family. So what was with the old guy in the ranch? Did that have he, anything to do with anything? He was the one who owned the ranch, and they were kind of manipulating him through sex and other things to let them stay on the right, ranch. Right, but what did that? No, I get that. But what did that have to do with anything else? Um. Like, the scene with Dakota Fanning and Brad Pitt was just kind of, like, I was waiting for it to, like, th- that part, specifically the the scene where he goes into the room with the old man, and he's like, I used to know you, stop being weird. I just felt like that could, it was not related to the rest of it. It felt really detached. Also, Brad Pitt 100% killed his wife. <laughs> I'm just gonna put oh, my yeah. I'm gonna put my sure two cents in. If there was ever a debate, I think Brad Pitt <laughs> definitely killed his wife. Um, I mean, so, well, to play devil's advocate for the movie, it sounds like you were not under the impression that that was the Manson family when you were watching that scene. Yeah, I didn't know that until you just told me that. I think that scene is a lot spookier and eerier, knowing that. That who's that's the who old he's, man, though? He's just the guy who owns the ranch. That he's the one they're all mooching off of. Then why was he? Why did he have such an important? Why did he have such a scene? You know, that I mean, just I think I'm try. I'm struggling to find out how it in the wrap up of the movie what right. significance it plays. But that was essentially um, Brad Pitt's character being like something weird is going down here, um, and then it was because the. One of the main people he dealt with while he was there ended up, ended up going to the house. To yeah, yeah. I also, mean, also shout out to uh, uh, Maya Hawk from yeah. Stranger Things for being this movie for two goddamn <laughs> seconds. Um, I think if you were to put any significance into that scene, whether it played a big role in the plot or not, it's simply to say, uh, it's simply to delve into the the Manson family. In the eyes of Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. So why... And the movie didn't explain this, but it didn't have to. I'm just asking now. Why was there a bunch of hippies? Why was it a hippie ranch? Was he just one of them? Was Charles Manson just one of the hippies? He was... The, it was essentially a cult. They were called the Manson family. And he... Oh, so they weren't actually his relatives. No. No, it's a cult that people I see. So ended up calling the, the Manson the, family. The three or four people who perpetrated the actual Tate murders could have been any three or four people from that cult. Yeah. It just so happened that it was Tex and the other three. Yeah. I see. Okay. Um, I did like when Leo DiCaprio's character was on the set of that one show that he filmed for mm-hmm. most of the movie. I did like that. I liked those scenes with the girl. Yep. Uh, and I like the two scenes where he was actually acting, the one with Timothy Oliphant at the table where he's like, I fucked it up! Yeah, yeah. And the, yeah. the freak out in the trailer, and then the scene with Luke Perry where he's got the girl 
it, like a gun pointed to her, and she's like, "That's the best acting I've ever seen." Mm-hmm. I like that stuff, but I like it a little less after seeing the end of the movie because his acting career was like the main focus of the movie until it wasn't, and then the sh- and then the 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 subtraction of the Sharon of the Sharon Tate murder of the Tate murders was the focus of the movie and Tate and Leo DiCaprio had basically nothing to do with each other and in fact they didn't meet until after it was all over there, there's three main characters it's Brad Pitt Leo DiCaprio and Sharon Tate and the the this group doesn't meet this group you know well I think that's the whole like uh because you did something, you watched this the opposite Pauline watched it, which was she went in knowing nothing, had a basic, you know, quote unquote pop culture knowledge of the fact that Charles mm. Manson killed Sharon Tate, had an oh shit moment when she realized that both Charles Manson and Sharon Tate are in the film. And then from there, I feel like it's supposed to be like, when are these two going to meet? When are these stories going to collide? Mm-hmm. But you kind of had that throughout the whole movie because you, like, were ready for that the whole movie. No, see, I knew he was going to change it. That's why I did research because I wanted to know what actually happened. So when it didn't happen or it happened differently, I could be like, oh, okay. And I feel like I wasn't really impressed by it this time. Okay. Like, the decision, the decision he made, you know what I mean? Like, and I will say... The, the end of Inglorious Bastards and the end of this movie are the exact same thing in that he says, well, what if it was different and this time it was my OCs that did it? Mm-hmm. But I think Inglorious Bastards did it well, and I think Once Upon a Time in Hollywood didn't. Uh, well, yeah. w- Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, see, I, I think it's interesting to the concept that one small thing is going to change the entire historical aspect of this story. And I think it's interesting that it was the next door neighbors instead of the Tate family and the next door neighbors happened to be prepared to put up with three um, goons running into the house. And it all falls down to one thing. That's their shitty car. Their shitty car is literally like the the plot point of this movie. If he didn't get pissed and walk out and start yelling at them, it, history would have just gone the way it was supposed to. Mm. So I think that's interesting that the, the his one change all was on a thread. There was one small thread, and that's they needed to interject. And that interjection was simply he was drunk and pissed that their car was loud mm. at like one in the morning. No, I'll I'll give you that. It was just weird to me that like the the first couple hours of the movie was like a real deep dive into like the like socioeconomic life of 1970s TV character actor uh business. Yeah. And then like all of a sudden it was like no 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 no. Uh it's about the Tate murders. So just focus on that now. Well, also, if I may, uh this is something he didn't hate Blade as well, and I didn't like it then. I I really hate when there's all of a sudden a narrator. This time it was yeah. in fact Kurt Russell doing the narration. Yeah, but there's a narrator at two points. There's a narrator when you expect it to come when it came in and hate Blade. When at the end of the movie it's like, all right, it's wrapping up. We need Kurt Russell to explain things. Mm-hmm. And then he came out for like one sentence way early in the movie where he's like. This is a lie because he was uh, d- drinking under the influence, driving under the influence, and all that stuff. And I was like, "Don't fucking stop it!" <laughs> yeah. Like I feel like movies, at the very like front of a movie, like before you've even like consumed most of it, I feel like movies are defined by does it have narration or does it not? And I feel like Quentin Tarantino's movies don't have narration, and then he puts narration in them. You know mm. what I mean? Well, that's a, just a stylistic choice of his. I feel like that's either you you like it or you don't type yeah. of thing. I don't. I think I think go all in on narration or don't. Okay. You know? No, that's fair. Um, Did you recognize that um, 
Margaret Qualley, the woman who played the the hippie that he was like kind of flirting with, and he was like, "Are you 18?" She was the woman who played Misa in the live action American Death Note. Oh, I really? They changed her name to Mia because how dare they have a Japanese name? <laughs> Um, what did you think of the product placement of Red Apple cigarettes in this one? Oh, dude, Leonardo DiCaprio's character definitely has lung cancer. <laughs> I know that's not what you asked me, but like, holy shit, that's that was sort of my favorite part. How he definitely one hundred percent has lung cancer, and it's just not a plot point, but it's just something obvious that's happening. You know? Oh, you're blowing my mind. I actually don't know what you're talking about anymore. Leonardo DiCaprio's character yeah. smokes all the time. Did you watch the credit scene? I did, yes. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was referring to. Right. No, the credit scene the credit scene is the culmination of the he probably has lung cancer story arc that is missable. Because there's the scene where he's talking with the guy who's like got the jacket on, he's like, Ah, you're a television yeah. actor. Al Pacino. No, 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 no. When he gets the job. And the dude comes in the trailer and he's oh, like, we're oh, going to put oh. you in a wig. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's coughing up a storm. He's oh, coughing yeah. up that whole time. And then he coughs like later in the film. And then there was the the Red Apple cigarette commercial where he was like, I love me, whatever the fuck this is. And then it's cut. And he's like, fuck this. Get this out of here. He's just like definitely unhealthy and definitely going to die of lung <laughs> cancer in like two years. Okay. Um. I also, uh, I don't know. I guess that doesn't matter. I was going to say that. I, I, I just, I, I, I think it's weird when movies, like, hyper-focus in on one amount of time, and then they're like, anyways, three years passed, and here's what happened. Yeah. About the whole Italian... Uh, yeah. It was interesting what you were talking about, but I was just like, wow, these are two different characters now, because they've aged. Do you want to know something interesting? Uh, when he's lif- listing off the movies... That um, Leonardo DiCaprio starred in. Yeah, one of the names was uh, one of the fake names from Inglorious Bastards that they gave at the movie theater. Oh, um, that's cool. What was it? I don't know. Th- I'm trying to think. Uh... Oh shoot! It's an Italian name, and. Uh... It's the very last one of, like, the, he was only supposed to do three movies, and he right. did a fourth one, and it was directed by fake name. And the guy from Inglorious Bastards was supposed to be a, a famous Italian director. Like, yeah. that was his backstory. Uh, I want to cool. say his last name was Martini, but... Okay. Um, I just, yeah, I, I thought that was interesting. Do any of his other movies have stuff like that? Oh, Do yeah. Have, like, connecting threads that you can, like... This is something I've wanted to talk about to you about like maybe even doing on cinematic relief was the Tarantino universe because that yes they're all connected no I know that but is there on screen evidence of that yeah so in Pulp Fiction um I was gonna say Tarantino John Travolta's character yeah is brothers by name they both have the same last name with one of the characters in Reservoir Dogs okay both movies. You've seen Pulp Fiction, right? We watched it not. together. No. No. Oh. Would you want to? Yeah. I. Yeah. Okay. Um, Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction. I mean, I know the whole thing about it. Okay. I know that it's like shot out of order. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's I know not that. like that's not like a twist or anything. That's just. Oh, that's not a secret. No. That's oh, just okay. a Stylistic choice of his. I thought that that was like the twist ending. No, that you find out. Oh, okay. No, yeah. because it's like five different character stories in Pulp Fiction. Yeah, and you like start one, cut, start one, oh, okay. cut, start one, so on, so forth. Um, I still believe that I thought that was like a big like you get to the end of the movie you're like whoa. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um. And then, well. I mean, here's maybe the twist you're thinking of. The movie starts with the ending scene. Oh, cut, okay. And then at the end of the movie, you're finally at that scene that it started at. Okay. Um, that I guess that could be like a, cool, you know, secret, but it's not like a big surprise. Right. It's right. Just, like when you're watching it, you're just like, oh, now here's the scene. <laughs> yeah. Um. 
some of the characters in Inglorious Bastards have the same last name as some characters from it. They were all connected. Okay. Either through products, through names, they're all connected. And it's the Tarantino universe. And I, I think it's interesting, especially if you have a list of what connects them all. Because yeah. he started making these and doing this in a world where that wasn't really a thing. Making like a universe that has nothing to do with each other, right, but they're right. connected in one way or another. Um, if you ever wanted, whether it be for cinematic relief or just for ourselves, if you ever wanted to do the Tarantino universe, okay, I'd do it. It's probably not... Death Race probably isn't connected, right? No, I don't think that's technically his movie. No, it is. It is? Yeah, Planet Terror isn't his. Planet Terror is Robert Rodriguez, but they both made a movie for, for it, Grindhouse. It might be. I don't Maybe. know. I don't know. I don't know. He does it in every single movie. But yeah, but the short of it, long and short of it, yes. For I various think, uh, reasons. I think Kurt Russell might be his most recycled oh, yeah. actor at this point. Oh, I bet. Um, or Samuel Jackson. It might be Samuel oh, Jackson. Oh, no, you're right. It's Sam Jackson. Because I yeah. think he's in like, <laughs> with the exception of this one, and I think he's just not in this one because he was just in Django, and I'm sure he had a bunch of Marvel stuff he had to do. Yeah. Um, Django, you've seen that one. Yes. Yeah, I have. Um, I, I don't like know what the connecting characters are there, but I, I'm sure there is some. I like Django. I liked Django. Unchained. Unchained, <laughs> yes. No, I just. I like Django, but I like Django Unchained. <laughs> I like Django. I love Django. No. <laughs> uh, J- I like. Okay, here's what. Here's here's where I'm at. Yeah, I like Django Unchained better than this movie. Okay, I like this movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood better than Hateful, Hateful Eight, Eight. I figured um, you really didn't like Hateful Eight. I did not. No. Um. I mean, it wasn't. It just wasn't for me. Um. I like Kill Bill, one and two, the best. Other than Inglorious Bastards. Inglorious okay. Bastards is my favorite one. Kill Bill 1 and 2 is below that. Then Django, then this, and then... Okay. And you haven't Blade. seen Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs? I haven't, no. Okay. I've seen... Oh, I've seen Death Race. I'm whatever about Death Race. I've also seen... I know it's not his movie, but he's in it. I've seen From Dusk Till Dawn. Mm-hmm. Uh, that movie... Well, I oh, could, you I, know my thoughts about that movie. Yeah, I could, I could take or leave that yeah. movie. Yeah. Um, I really wanted to like the m- that movie, and I was like super into the first half of it. Then I was like, "Oh, it's some make believe bullshit." <laughs> we had such a real storyline, a promising storyline going on right here. Some like Breaking Bad shit. See, I was the opposite. I knew the vampires were coming, so the whole time that the psycho killer mobster shit was happening, I was like, "Get to the vampires!" <laughs> and then they did, and I was like. Oh, they look weird, and they're weird, and this is weird. Yeah. I think that's just a bad movie. <laughs> yeah, I think if it for, was For various reasons. I th- I feel like if if I was to guess, Tarantino and that other dude sit down to start this movie, and Tarantino's doing the mobster parts, the other dude's like writing the, the story about the family. Yeah. Then Tarantino's like, what if vampires <laughs> and this dude's like just for like a second and then we go back to the story we're writing and tarantino's like shut up <laughs> what if halfway through it just became a vampire movie and this guy was like you are quentin tarantino <laughs> so you can do no wrong in the 90s whatever you say um you keep saying this other guy i know i i know he's also famous i can't think he, of who robert he rodriguez he yeah. made spy kids yeah and the adventures of shark boy and lava girl oh what a what a winner well spy kids is great no spy kids is fine but uh, i just mean adventures of shark boy and lava girl i don't recommend <laughs> um and robert rodriguez of course made planet terror and from dusk till dawn he's made a couple other things that i can't think of he's probably most well known for spy kids unfortunately yeah. because it's you know it's like his like and I'm out, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um... Oh, God. We're good. You're not that far away from having seen them all. No. I'm not. You don't sound enthused to, to watch anymore, No, no, either. no. I am. I am. Sorry. I'm just... I'm just tired. Um, but, um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else I really wanted to talk about with, 
uh, this movie. I think, like, in all Tarantino movies, I think the acting was excep- exceptional. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think Margot Robbie did a good job. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt always do a good mm-hmm. job. Even the guy playing Bruce Lee, I think, did a pretty good, yeah. uh, pretty good, pretty good Bruce Lee. Uh, did you hear Adam West and Burt Ward at the end of the, tr- at the end of the credits? No. Yeah, there was like a, a radio, like sound sounds of a radio commercial, with them in it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was neat. Um. Are we checking in with our boy for anything? Oh yes, we are. We are. Um, most definitely. Uh, anything else no, to say I'm about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? I give Once Upon a Time in Hollywood a solid seven out of ten. Okay. I don't recommend it to people who are new to Tarantino no, films. No, there's definitely. I'll give you that. There's a hundred percent better Tarantino films you mm. could start off with. Having said that, Tarantino film or not, I thought it was a decent movie. I thought, I thought it was interesting. The the, uh, because my jaw dropped because I didn't know. I also same as Paul. I had the same, um, experience as Pauline did. I didn't really watch trailers for this because I didn't want to spoil too much. Okay. Um, but, and when but, I did, I did not pay attention to if I just saw Margot Robbie. Did not pay attention that it was Sharon Tate. But you, you knew that Charles Manson was going to be in the film, did you not? No. Okay, you and I went to see Deadpool two, mm-hmm. and there was a trailer for this in front of it. And oh, you know what? I did. I guess I just didn't assume he was going to yeah, play a major you, role. When we saw that trailer, you leaned over to me and you said, "That's Charles Manson." Oh, I remember. No, that. I I did. I I just didn't put two and two together. I don't know. I just yeah. when I was watching it, I did not expect it to be about the Tate murders. Yeah. I just didn't. Because Manson did more than that. Right, yeah. You know? Especially in the 70s. To me... He did more than that 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 weekend. Probably. (laughs) No, he did. Did he? There was a whole other family, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Um, No, I think my headspace when Once Upon a Time in Hollywood uh, was, was just a trailer. I was thinking, this is just a like a hateful eight, just a period piece mm. that he, that's exactly what I thought. I was like, this is a period piece that Tarantino made that happens to have Charles Manson in it. Cause like, who's a famous person in Hollywood that right. could have an interesting interaction with, and yeah. that's Charles Manson. The, the end, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, and then I started putting two and two together and actually watching the movie. And I was like, Oh no, here it comes again. He's gonna switch it up. <laughs> um, uh oh, hiccups. Yep. You you only do that like once every six months. No, they're here now though. Mm. Um. And I would say that. Um. Oh man, I forget what I was gonna say. I was gonna disagree with you, but I forget on which front. I think I was just gonna repeat myself at this point. I. It wasn't a bad... F- oh, that's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to say. Uh, watching the trailer, I, I thought this movie was going to be a lot more fun. Okay. And it wasn't... I wasn't, like... I didn't, like, overhype myself on how fun it's going to be, right? Um, I do think I went in thinking this movie was going to be really good. And that's my fault. No one told me the movie was going to be exceptional and that I was going to love it. Um, but, like, I did... You know, watching the trailers, I did know that the Tate murders were going to be at least... If they didn't happen, they were going to be at least fucked with in yeah. this movie. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I just didn't think of it that way. No, and that's that's fair. I'm 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 sure. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, both valid uh, valid ways to consume the movie. Yeah. Um. So let's let's see what our boy has. So I found an interesting page on the Roger Ebert uh, website. You can search Roger Ebert's website by person. Yeah. So I searched it for Quentin Tarantino. So how about you give me your ch- you have a you have a choice. Okay. Your choices are Kill Bill 1 or 2, Inglorious Bastards, uh Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction or From Dusk Till Dawn. I need to know what he thinks about till from dusk till dawn. Okay, that's what we're doing. So, 
This is a review from January 19th, 1996. The title of the review is From Dusk Till Dawn. How many stars do you think he gave it? Just as a reminder to Chris and a reminder of the audience, Roger Ebert, uh, because he is a full-fledged psychopath and gives uh, star ratings out of four. Two and a half. Of five or ten. Two and a half. Close. He gave it a three. Wow. I don't think I'd give it a three. I wouldn't give it a two. From Dusk Till Dawn resembles one of those mythological creatures s- creatures stitched together out of two different Wait, species. Wait, hold on. Time out. Yes. From Dusk Till Dawn could have been avoided had Goop been around. Just throwing that out there. From Dusk Till Dawn could have been avoided had Goop... Oh, because she has vampire repellent. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you're right. Uh, from Dusk Till Dawn resembles one of those mythological creatures stitched together out of two different species, like a bull with a man's torso. Talking about a minotaur, bro? <laughs> it's got a name. Uh, in this case, we get half of a hostage movie yep. and half of a vampire gore fest. The transition yeah. is instantaneous. For about an hour, we've been following the story of two mad dog killers and their victims, and then suddenly a stripper in a Mexican bar turns to a vampire, and off we go. Genre hopping like that is a specialty of the movie's writer, Quentin Tarantino, whose work sometimes resembles channel surfing. Robert Rodriguez, the director from Dust Salon, can only be can only be said to throw himself into the same spirit, heart, and soul. Throw himself into the same spirit, heart, and soul. This is one of those movies you might like or you might hate, but you won't be able to deny its crazy zeal. Actually, a lot of people will hate half of the movie, and like the other. Those who loved the invention of Tarantino's dialogue in Pulp Fiction will like the first half, mm-hmm. especially a brilliant pre-title sequence featuring Michael Parks as a Texas Ranger who creates a whole blah, 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 blah. Uh, those who like shootouts in Rodriguez's El Mariachi and Desperado will uh, like the second half with a nonstop mayhem and a scuzzy bikers and trekkers strip joint with lots of vampires exploding eyeballs, cascading guts and weapons made out of a power... Powered wooden stake. Uh, I guess you could call it a pneumatic vampire drill. Not sure what he was going for there. That's interesting, though, what he just said. I never thought of it like that. I never thought of it like the first half is a Quentin Tarantino film and the second half is a Rodriguez film. Yeah. It's very interesting. I never thought of it like that. Uh, I like the first half best. I uh, did, too. Af- after the title sequence, we get to know. Yeah, okay. I don't care about the plot. Uh, he's talking about the plot. Talking about all the plot. All I can say is that the last 30 minutes of the film is, if you liked Dawn of the Dead from 1997, you'll like this. The plot is forgotten as Rodriguez goes for violence and special effects, including people who morph into hideous creatures in the middle of a barroom brawl. The There's also an outbreak of vampires amongst the leading characters in scenes owing something to Assault on Precinct 13 and Night of the Living Dead from Dust Till Dawn is a skillful meat and potatoes action extravaganza with some added neat touches. E.R. Oh, George Clooney's character uh, making his big... Oh, no, sorry. George Clooney was on E.R., the show. Yeah. E.R. E.R. George Clooney making his screen big screen debut... Really? Shows Adder- yeah, he was on ER first and then in From Dusk Till Dawn. That was, this was his first movie, though? Yeah. Wow. Uh, shows admirable restraint in going along with craziness without seeming overwhelmed by it. The good thing in the movie, especially some of the dialogue, are so much better than the rest that you would wish Rodriguez and Tarantino had tried to triumph over this material instead of merely delivering it. It's a pro job, but these guys can do better. The end of the review. So it sounds like he didn't want to give it a three out of four. But he did anyways. Yeah. I mean, he that last sentence, I think n- he nailed it. The, it was definitely a professional movie. These two could have done better. Right. They could have made two movies out of it. Why make one movie when you could make two movies? Yeah, I don't know. And also, maybe I'm wrong. But didn't From Dusk Till Dawn spawn like a multi-movie like, yeah. TV show? Like, I haven't seen any of it, but that's my no, understanding. No, me either. But I think there's like five From Dusk Till Dawns and a three-season TV show. Yeah. I think. 
I think crazy because this movie is like so weird. Yeah, you wouldn't think that this is a movie that would like get the Shrek treatment, right? If I was to guess, they needed a way to get a preacher, a couple psychopaths, and bikers in a bar where vampire. Because I'm guessing the vampire part was set. This is what this movie was gonna be. And I think they needed a way to get all of these characters into this bar at once. I don't think they anticipated their reasonings to be so interesting that peop- that people are going to be upset when they just drop that plot. That makes sense. Plus, we need we can't start in the bar, right? Because we need a main character to focus on. You also can't start in the bar because then the movie would be 40 minutes long. Well, I mean, even if it was... I mean, we start in the bar, but it's longer, right? Yeah. We, we kind of need a main character to cling to. Right. And that... Where the, the character for you is the kidnapped woman or George Clooney, they, 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 there you go. Right. No, I think they just, I think he outrode himself. I think he needed a, a plot that just kept us interested till we got to the real plot, but then everybody was like, but it's so good till right then. Mm. You didn't need vampires, but I think the whole time Tarantino's like, but it was always going to be vampires. <laughs> God, I haven't seen From Dusk Till Dawn in so long. My friend Jen and I had a, like a movie day. Yeah. And we watched From Dusk Till Dawn. <laughs> and we watched Iron Man 2. Movies couldn't be more <laughs> unlike each other. I Mo- Movies couldn't be more dissimilar. They were both on Netflix at the time. I remember that much. From Dusk Till Dawn just aggravates me. Yeah. Because I do get, every single time, I get invested in the opening plot. Stop watching it. No, I won't. I won't. That's, that's what I'm getting at is... is I'm not I I will not watch from dusk till dawn again cuz it's just upsetting to me. Yeah. I honestly even if even if it was um like a good choice that they like spliced it like that, I don't think it was that great of a movie. I don't find myself ever like being like, "Man, from dusk till dawn." No. I think about the first movie it could have been. And then I think about how I probably would have appreciated the second movie from the second half of the movie that it could have been. But oh no, what I'm what I'm saying is I didn't find either interesting. No, you didn't care for either. No, not really. Okay. Um. Yeah. All right. I think I think Thunder's just in a Tarantino hating mood today. I'm not hating. I'm just. I think that I think that I'm losing it with Tarantino. You know. I I think that Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was sort of the the first nail in the coffin where I'm like maybe Tarantino can make a bad film, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it's and like I said, bad compared to the rest of his movies. I still think it was pretty good. Like oh, I said yeah, I give it a yeah. solid 7 out of 10, which is decent. We have both gone on record saying if anybody gave our channel that rating, we'd be happy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I think we have to have you watch two of the, two of the Mac Daddies, two of the big ones. Pulp Fiction. Yeah. And what's the other one I'm missing? Reservoir Dogs. Is that really one of the ones that people are like, oh, hell yeah. He, he used it as his splash for the longest time. Oh, okay. A scene from was Reservoir Dogs. Okay. I think it's his first one. Yeah. So like, so if you're not overly enthusiastic about Reservoir Dogs, I, I, think I'd be like, okay, but you got to cut him a little slack. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Pulp Fiction, though, if you don't like Pulp Fiction, then maybe Tarantino isn't for you. But Inglorious Bastards is one of my favorite movies of all time. I've watched that movie six times. I fucking love that movie. Typical Tarantino. Is Inglorious Bastards not a typical Tarantino movie? Not really. How so? It's a period piece, which up until that one, mm. he had never done before. But he's done... Three more since then. He's done two more. Hateful Eight and... And Django Unchained. Oh, you're right. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. See, but Django Unchained it, is wacky. It's It's got the blood and guts of a Tarantino film. I would consider that more along the lines of a typical Tarantino film than I would Inglorious Bastards. I know what you're thinking. Inglorious Bastards gets kind of rough too, but I don't know. I can't describe it. There's a... There's, uh a feeling to a Tarantino film that I feel all throughout uh, um, Django that I only feel sometimes in Inglorious Bastards. I love Inglorious Bastards too. Okay, great movie. I'm not. I'm not sitting here shitting on it, 
but I wouldn't say it's your typical Tarantino film. I don't get the typical Tarantino film vibe from Inglorious Bastards. I okay. think it's a little too authentic till the end. Okay. Where tar- where that's what I'm trying to say. In Django, it's all original characters in an original setting and he just does whatever he wants with them. He can get goofy, he can do some weird stuff where in um Inglorious Bastards there's some actual history he's got to kind of walk around so he yeah. can't he can't have these guys just shooting up downtown Germany the whole movie cuz then people would be like well, this is just silly. <laughs> yeah. This is just nonsense. Yeah. Anyways, I think I think <laughs> uh to get you back on the Tarantino wagon, we got to we got to have you watch Pulp Fiction at least. Yeah, no, I'm 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 down to start with Pulp Fiction. If I really like it, then maybe. I've always had Reservoir Dogs on my list. I just have never, I've just never gotten to it. I actually, I remember when I was a younger, I had a stack of movies that were my dad's that I was like, I'm going to watch them, and then I never did. <laughs> and Reservoir Dogs was in that. I think Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction was in that so uh, stack. There's some deep lore with those two. Um, like connective lore? Yes. Oh, okay. So, John Travolta and one of the characters in Reservoir Dogs are brothers. Mm hmm. They also, there's a lack of police in Pulp Fiction. Like, there's a lot of scenes where you're like, where, where are the cops? I look left, I look right, there's no cops. Mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? Yeah. They suggest that um, oh, so they took you... place in the same day and all the cops were in Reservoir Dogs. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, so are you supposed to watch Reservoir Dogs first? Does it matter? No, it shouldn't matter. Oh, okay. No, you can watch them whatever order you want because they're not sequels to each other. They're not right, connected right. at all, but two characters are brothers. It would make sense. It would make one make more sense if you're like, well, there's all the cops. <laughs> That's what they were doing. Yeah. Um. No, I mean, look out for... Uh, our Pulp Fiction episode. Okay. Which will be... Oh, it's official. Way in the future. Probably December, January. Yeah. Because I own it. I, I, I don't need to stream it yeah. or anything. No, I, 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 own, I own most Tarantino movies. Cool. Yeah. Um, I think that'll do it for us, though. Yeah. Um, Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, We don't tease what's next, right? No. No, sometimes we do. Sometimes we do? We're no, you know what? We won't. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, then in that case, I'm Thunder. I'm Lightning. Stay safe, stay clean, and we'll see you next time.